listeners, welcome to, welcome to Bingkai Suara with Miss Iska. Hello to everybody who is listening to this episode. I hope you guys are having a good day. I'm so excited to be here today because I'm going to be welcoming a very, very special guest. He is an American Chinese artist based in California. So everybody, please welcome Alan Ling. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. How are you, Alan? I'm doing real good. We're uh, I'm, it's uh, almost um, uh, almost it's ten o'clock tonight at p.m. Mm -hmm. over here in California, and we've got, we've just yeah. finished up a gigantic rainstorm, but we're we're doing fine. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. Um. First of all, before I start, uh, to ask you many many questions, I want to congratulate you. Congratulations on dropping your new single. Remember. The final part of the heartbreak trilogy that's beautiful so we are Thank going you. to talk about it in a bit but let's talk about you first okay i want to start with who is alan ling like in real life apart being a singer songwriter and producer i'm actually a, i'm a full-time physical therapist so i actually oh. run my own uh physical therapy clinic And we do, uh, we see a lot of people after surgery, um, total joint replacements, people with Parkinson's disease, paralyzed folks. Uh, and we uh, have a water therapy program. So we put people in a pool and some of them who can't walk, you know, on land, they, they walk in the water, not uh -huh. on the water, but in the water. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, I, and so I'm, a, I, you know, I'm in the water with the patients and, and teaching them exercises or, you know, helping them move better. So uh, I have a whole, I have uh, 17 em employees with with me. Uh, we work yeah. as a great team together. So I've had this uh, company for many years already. So very well established uh, in our community. So yeah, we, wow, we see, that's we see, cool. Yeah, we see over 100 patients a day. So we're very okay. very busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now uh, we know you are a multifaceted artist in music composition and uh, perform performance. And uh, film production, creating and publishing graphic novels. Yes, yeah. Uh, continuing to heal people through the profession of physical therapy, like you said. And what made you decide to make music and share it with the world? Well, I the first thing I did when, when it came down to doing anything important was I wrote a disco mm -hmm. song on a clarinet when I was in eighth grade. <laughs> And I think that took more talent Whoa. than writing the music now <laughs> because that's not a, a tool, that is not an instrument you use to to write music with. It's more of a, you know, it's, it's an orchestra. You know, you would be in a large, huh. large band to be able to, to, to be able to perform that kind of music. Um, and so uh, I've, if you asked what made me want to perform music, um, I would have to, uh -huh. I would have to say that was Dave Lopez of Flipside. And Dave is my friend oh. and he, um, he, we write music together. And then he goes, well, you sing. Okay. Why don't you just, why don't you, um, you know, record more music and or go perform it. And I go, I don't, I don't know if I want to perform music. And so he goes, no, you need to practice. So I went and took mm -hmm. voice lessons and I went in, you know, rehearsed twice a week. And this is what I was working full time. I was trying to get all this stuff in there. And, um, you know, eventually uh, Dave took me in front of 500, 600 people. Uh, and he goes, okay, Ooh. you're going to sing these two songs. You're going to open for our band. And so I just walked up there. I sang and I had no stage fright. I just sang that music. I talked to the audience And there, Dave goes, cool. see, that's weird that you could just walk up there and not be afraid. And I go, they don't know the lyrics. I could screw up and they wouldn't <laughs> care. <laughs> so, so, uh, but I didn't get booed off stage. People like my music, actually. So that was a good sign. So anyway, that. And now uh, it looks like I, I have to practice some more. And we, we're going to put together a local performance uh, next month. So, so we're, we're going to get out there mm -hmm. and start performing again. So I, I do have to practice in front of an audience. Because when uh -huh. people are staring at you, then all of a sudden uh -huh. you could just forget what where you are and just forget your words. So yeah, oh, wow. very possible. Mm -hmm. So where is it? To, uh, the performance? It'll probably yeah, yeah. be um uh it'll be uh, you know we're San Francisco Bay Area. We're going to be on the East Bay side, so it'll probably at this maybe at this place called the Baltic, which is a very uh -huh. small small venue. But you know anytime you can just go out there and sing to people. 
it's it's already a, a pleasure to do that and to to, mm -hmm. to see people like your music and it's great so yeah, yeah. Well, I, I really wonder when I talk to the musician, I, I always wonder how does it feel when you be the center of attention and and hear everyone sing about your song? How how does it feel? Um, right now I'm I'm kind of still numb uh <laughs> that we're that we got a million, almost a million views on on YouTube already for the first mm -hmm. the music video. And then uh, our song uh, on the world radio charts, we were at number one for two weeks already. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, so I didn't expect that to happen. So, you know, it, we, we were just putting it out there and okay, let's see. And now, you know, the it, it really encourages me that, you know, yes, okay, we should we should go out there and perform more or, and I'm writing more more music right now and having and putting out you know designing and produ pre-producing uh uh the two two more music videos mm -hmm. but you know you have to start way in advance before you start to actually film everything so i had to start early before i do it you know in spring so wow wow you're so cool you can do everything <laughs> Uh, I yeah I delegate I don't I don't do everything I, I definitely I, I delegate to very good people mm -hmm. uh, and then you know I have my you have the you have the vision so when someone mm -hmm. says oh you create all these comic books and I say I don't draw them all but I come up with the storyboards I actually draw some of the sketches on what I want it to look like and then uh, the stories of course and the characters I do come up with and but what it's interesting is if that can use those skills to do the films because mm -hmm. I could write up the storyboards for the films too and how I want them to look so that it, everything crosses over. Um, same thing with uh, performing. I go in front of a patient, you know, when a patient asks me, mm -hmm. I want to kill myself. I'm in so much pain. Can you help me? And I have to say, yes, I can. And I'm going to help you. And that's stage fright. When I come up with a person who is in a lot of pain or someone who, you know, they're, they're, they're you know, in very, very bad shape. I have to be able to to coach them and to be able to be kind and optimistic that I that I can do or my team can help them get better. And so uh, it's going to a place where there's a few hundred people or thousands, thousands of people who bought tickets to see you. I don't think that's you shouldn't be afraid. You should be happy that mm -hmm. that's happening. And but, you know, I get a little bit nervous every time I see a new patient still, even after all these years of doing physical therapy. Because I want to, I want to please them. I want to make sure that they're in the right place. Wow! So you are a kind of yes man in a professional way. <laughs> yeah, and you, I don't. I want to be realistic too. But the thing about music, music is real. I mean, when I write my songs, they're about something I experienced, and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not super specific about the way I I say my experience, but like uh, the 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 song "Remember." starts out with walking down the streets of New York City. Well, yes, I was walking down the streets of New York City with my you know, girlfriend at the time. And so that's how I started the song because I said, oh, I want to draw something from my experience because it's easy for me to write lyrics based on real things. Now, I don't want to make stuff up when I, when I write uh, songs. Or if I do making it up, it's to make people laugh. So I've written some pretty silly songs with Dave <laughs> that that isn't <laughs> that we do not that we don't sit there and record and and, and spend all the effort doing because they're just they're really stupid. So <laughs> okay, okay. Now let's talk about the final part of the Heartbreak trilogy, which is remember. I've been listening to it a lot also for this interview. I was trying to get the vibe, so I was listening to it a while ago, and I'm falling in love more every day with the song. And you. and you, yeah, and you describe this song as a song for everyone who's remember a past love. So yes. can you tell us more about this track? Can you tell us about the inspiration behind the song? Well, the inspiration, I was I was sitting in the studio with Dave and Dave goes, hey, you should listen to these uh, instrumental tracks by one of, my, mm. one of his friends. So all I heard was the instrumental track only. But what happened was when I started to listen to a song, I started to sing. I started to sing along with the song. The words started coming out. And I just said, Dave, I, I know how to write the song. I know I know how to do the melody and the lyrics. Let's 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 turn this into one of our songs. And so um and, and it, my mood was I was actually very happy. 
I wasn't heart, too heartbroken. It was years after the thing had happened, but I was nostalgic. I was kind of, my mind was kind of going back and you know, I was remembering some things. Mm. And so what was, what was really, really nice about it was to be able to, to reminisce about something without as much pain, but still be able to remember and be grateful about my experience and the relationship I had. And that's how come I said, I first I made a prison of the memories and then you get out, but you still remember and it's okay. You know, that's, it's, it's okay to remember people. And then, you know, you're grateful because, you know, if you move on to somebody else and, you know, if you don't really forget the person before, before that other person, and what is it? The other, the other, the other relationship prepares you for the next relationship. So, you know, yeah, you should always be happy that you you were able to be in love for a while. So that's mm -hmm. good. Okay. Okay. The trilogy uh, started with Trade to the Ocean in June 2023, uh, where the story revolves uh, around a broken heart and healing and the visual Mark Bayek, who has his style on for the metaphorical emotional journey. And then you continuing with a name in your book in mm -hmm. July 2023 also. Leading the final song, Remember, with uh, Dave Lopez. Well, that stunning landscape visual are serve as a metaphor, evolving with the emotional flow of the song. And for me, personally, uh, the narrative in this video plays a crucial role in conveying the message of each song in this trilogy. And you made everything so perfect. What oh, inspired you? you <laughs> yeah, what, what inspired you to make a music uh, video concept and to what extent does the video's narrative contribute to conveying the overarching message of the song? Wow, um, those, that's a great question. I, uh -huh. I, I Sometimes the music's not enough. You know, that you, you put out the song and you said, you know what, I don't think they're going to quite understand what I went through. So the very the first music video, I actually it was kind of like my fantasy that, you know, Aramis Knight, who's an, an actor friend of mine, played the <laughs> younger guy in the music video, and mm -hmm. he his girlfriend leaves him, and you know, but and she thinks that he has gone and drowned himself, but he actually didn't, <laughs> and he and they get together and they talk and they resolve, they have closure, they resolve the problems. Whereas I am the guy who basically did not get any closure, right? I did not get an answer. I, I was confused. And so um, the, the, I my wish was to always have that last conversation or a good conversation with the person before we part ways saying, hey, I just want to let okay. you know I really appreciated you and thank you. And I just don't understand what happened. Um, and for them to explain talk it out, just like the exit interview, some kind of thing where you could just say, okay, uh, I can understand that now. And, and, you know, we could be friends, but um, if that never happens, then you're just confused. And that's uh, the straight into the ocean thing. It's like, I'll just, I'll just drown myself and I don't have to be confused anymore. I don't have to feel any more pain. Um, but that didn't happen. Obviously uh, when I wrote the song, I said, this is such a great song. I got to keep, I got to finish writing and I'm not going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was that song. But I wrote the, the name in your book at the same time while I was oh, writing wow. Strange the Ocean. Yeah, they were like simultaneously being written. And uh, the name in the book is based on a real hurt also. And something that, you know, I experienced with her was that she had a diary. and But she let me read it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, am I going to be a name in your book? Right. I asked her that yeah. question. She she didn't get she didn't give me an answer. And I knew, oh, boy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't run. I just stuck around a little bit longer. I think that was my mistake. I, that was I should have just said, "Hey, you know what? It's okay. I'm, I'm. We should just kind of leave. Just let's just split now before it gets to be really bad." But I I stuck around. I don't know how to quit. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the most exciting part during the making of Heartbreak Trilogy? Um, the exciting part was we lost one third of the footage for the last awesome. one we lost it oh. because of a because of a, a, a digital transfer thing something went wrong so we had to read we, we did a lot of it we cut out so much of it um and mm -hmm. so what you see is not exactly what i wanted but oh. it, it, it gets the message across it still gets the message across um so oh. i that's okay yeah but everything but it wasn't... looks so perfect 
Thank you so much. Yeah, we yeah. I had really good editors. <laughs> I I'm not gonna uh, lie, but that's perfect for me. Oh, I'm, thank I'm you. amazed and falling in love every day with the song, with the music video. Yeah, we were, we were trying to get it, the the whole point is I guess I'm I was so fixated on what I wanted, but the the message and the mood came across well. And um, I would have to thank Dave Lopez for helping to just say, hey, don't worry about it. Let's just shoot some other footage. And then uh, his cousin, Marcela Acevedo, also shot a lot of the studio footage and the footage in the vineyard. Okay. And then we cut a lot of other, the pieces of the other first two music videos got thrown into the third one because it was flashbacks. I was having flashbacks of my, um, you know, of the, of my of remembering, my memories. So I have those yeah. flashbacks. But uh, it was, uh, it, we did, did we, uh, and uh, Navin Dore is also the editor. He edited that thing masterfully. And it, we, we, we struggled through the whole process. I can tell you that much. It was, it was very, very challenging. Wow. Yeah. And we see you have gathered a quiet number of fine, talented musicians and artists or actors in audio or video. Uh, yes. How can this happen? Please tell us. So I'm a physical therapist, right? So what <laughs> happened was some of these actors, I helped them out in a TV show, which was all stunts and fighting. So I was a yeah. physical therapist there and I made friends with Aramis and I made friends with Sherman Augustus, uh, Ali, Ali Anonatus. These are all people that were actors and in Into the Badlands. So I was, oh. uh, I was on the set helping them with uh, their injuries and things like that. So, uh, and some of the musicians you saw, they are they came to me for some some other kind of injuries or something, and I helped them out with that. And Dave introduced me to his network of musicians also. And we just all, all happened to get along. We were good friends. So uh, there's a lot of love, a lot of love and, and collaboration and admiration and respect during the whole production and all the music. So I think it shows, you know, people weren't just there just to do, you know, just to write, do this thing. They, they really worked hard on making the music really, really good. Mm -hmm. Mm, so you are connected with them and then yeah, everything I, uh, can be happened. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I'm, as a physical therapist, you try to get to know people really well, really fast mm -hmm. so that you can work with them, right? You have to get their mm -hmm. trust. And the same thing, I think that's, <laughs> that skill set kind of flowed into the whole thing about music and, and musicians and, um, and, I think if someone asked me what were you, what were you what were you doing with all these musicians, I said I was learning from them, and um, it was nice wow. that. But the acknowledgement came from the fans who are liking the music. Mm -hmm. That's the true acknowledgement. Of course, you know you have these very, you know, amazing musicians trying to get acknowledgement for these guys. Let me tell you, they've they've done everything and you know seen everything, and they're very they're very their bars are so high. That I'm like yeah. I'm never gonna I'm never gonna get a, a compliment <laughs> from anybody, but uh, Dave was the first person who complimented me. He goes, "You're a very good songwriter. You you know how to write music. You know how to write lyrics." And I go, "Wow, that's the first time anybody's ever told me I was any good." So okay. you know, so you you because you're working with all these other musicians who are really good. They 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 mm -hmm. worked really good. I'm not I'm a I'm a novice, so I wasn't you know I wasn't expecting, but I yeah. but I learned I learned a lot. Okay, you mentioned Dave so many times, so I can say that Dave is your hero in your musical journey. He's my guide, you know. Yeah, I don't, I good. don't know what I'm. I don't, you know. I, I know how to sing. I know how to write lyrics. I know how to write a melody. I know chord progressions. I can. I, I know how to put together songs. And I, I know it doesn't sound right, but Dave is the person who said you got to get out there and show the world what you're doing and who you are, because that's what makes you special, is that you have a message for everyone. And it's always very hopeful. I'm a happy person. But, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm singing about how messed up I got from a relationship, that doesn't mean I'm not happy. It just means that I'm telling my story. And I'm sure everyone's gone through something like that. So I'm just trying to let people look, you're not alone. I, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm, here I am, a happy person. And I go through all sorts of heartbreak all the time. And I don't even go looking for it. It finds me, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this is the most uh, exciting question. What's next from Alan Ling? Before, because <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait for your next project. 
And what's next from you? Uh, we have a really, really good music video and song coming out. It's a, it's a ballad. And it's not a heartbreak ballad. It is a love mm -hmm. ballad. And cool. it's um yeah and it, and it, it's about a long a love that has gone on for a long 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 time, and the person finally says, "Hey, look, you know, can we can we get together? Can we do this?" And it's um uh -huh. it's a song. It's called it's called Closer, but I can't tell Ooh. you too much about it because I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and and then and you'll you'll love the music video. Everyone who's seen it so far are just like. It is. It was professionally done. We filmed it with. There's at least a hundred people involved in this music video. Wow. And so it, it's, uh, yeah. So it, it was. It was. And we have ballet dancers. We have like. It's. It's a big production, and uh, I enjoyed doing it because all I did was show up and pretend to sing. Because <laughs> it's a the you know they're playing the song, so I don't have to really sing. I just pretend I'm singing, and so uh, and and I was just mm -hmm. there for you know a day, and I was done. So it was great. I didn't have to do anything. Someone else was doing everything. Okay. The first two music videos, I felt like I was doing everything. But this, the second, the third one, didn't have to do much anything. So it was great. Wow, wow, wow. I can't wait for that. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. You'll, okay, you'll uh, now <laughs> uh, this is maybe, okay. So um, this is the next question. Maybe uh, this is hard to answer, but for you, I think it's easy. When the okay. world listens to your tunes, uh, what kind of vibes or messages do you hope they get from your music? Ooh, I hope people feel that they're not alone. You know, if they're sad that they could say, oh, someone's gone through it just like I did. Someone someone had a heartbreak like I did too. And, um, and that they'll, it's okay to feel sad. Even when people are, even happy people, by the way, listen to sad music and they like it because it makes them it makes them feel something. So as long as someone feels an emotion, whether it's feeling sad or feeling grateful or just nostalgic, say, yeah, it, was, it just made me feel good or made me feel something, then um, I guess there, the message is emo an emotional message as well as a message of, of maybe hope. So, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't. When people I, listen to your song, uh... Maybe uh -huh. they can feel your song and feel that they always have a friend when they listen to your song. Exactly. That, hey, you know, uh, there's, and that's the problem. A lot of people, they hide their, they hide what happened there. I don't know mm -hmm. whether people feel ashamed when they're sad or they feel helpless or hopeless or mm -hmm. someone, you know, they feel vulnerable. But they cannot think, express about that. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. like I think listening to a song and singing with it helps you helps you get it out of your system. And so someone asked me, why do you write songs? Why do you do music videos? Why do you why do you write comic books? Why do you do all this stuff? And I said, I got all this stuff in my head. I cannot keep it in. I have to get it out of me. And um, you know, I think that'll be very important that when I go perform. What am I doing is I'm I'm going to be performing to people. I say, here, let me let me tell you my story, because I'm not afraid to let people know that I got hurt. And people shouldn't be afraid because then then maybe, you know, the world would be a better place to know that people get hurt mm -hmm. and that you should be kind to people all the time. Yeah. Well, beautiful. OK, uh, maybe this is the last questions. Um, what advice or words can you share based on your own experience and journey? I don't mean to sound like everybody's parents, but don't quit your day job. I mean, <laughs> you, 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 okay. As far as being a, a, a musician, I'm not really, I don't really call myself a musician. I'm, I'm more of a performing artist. I'm a singer songwriter. Musicians practice a lot. I mean, the real musicians are like every mm -hmm. day, two, three hours. I practice sometimes an hour. Sometimes I sing in my car for an hour while I'm driving someplace but I'm not as consistent as real true musicians are. Um, that said, uh, when you are working on music, focus on that. Try to get everything out of your head so that you can focus on, on creating or, 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 or performing because that will help, that will help you clear your mind and, and your, your, I think your, that you'll be emotionally healthy if you can actually focus on these things and clear your mind that way. So advice uh, is, uh, like I said, 
I don't want people think suffering is great and you can create a lot when you suffer, but there's only so much suffering that's good for your creation. When you're suffering too much, you're not going to be able to create anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why you don't want to worry about your paying rent the next month. You don't want to worry about if you're going to be homeless. You don't want to worry about disappointing uh, people if you can't, you know, uh, give them a Christmas present. You don't want to, you don't want to disappoint. Um, and so, and at least of all, you don't want to disappoint yourself because I know a lot of my musician friends, they're, they're just such kind and sensitive people, mm -hmm. but you know, they get hurt all the time because of their sensitivity. And it's not like I'm insensitive, but I think I'm, I'm, a little, I'm not exactly as, as, uh, uh, as aware of my mm -hmm. surroundings sometimes as some of my other musician friends are because that they're very in tune with their their emotional state and um and to the emotional state of people coming at you know coming at them that's why you know something about the internet and people hating people and all the other stuff so unhealthy and for these yeah, musicians yeah. it's even more unhealthy for them because they're really sensitive to you yeah, know, yeah. to this kind of negative feedback. So I'm, I have a lot of empathy for people in the industry. I know I'm going to get somebody who makes some comment about me and, but I just realize they don't know who I am. So, you know, they can make all the comments they want. It's just the problem is I can't make a comment back. <laughs> wow. Beautiful <laughs> advice from you. Okay. Wow. 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 Well, very great. Thank you so much, funny. Alan, for joining us today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay we can we can wait for your next project and oh, thank great. you listener for always listening to Binkai Suara podcast the podcast will always be available on any podcast streaming platform see you on the next episode and goodbye